Um, so I think the dead fish poem is actually a pretty good segue. I wouldn't often say about my poetry. <laughs> Um, I'm a preschool teacher and I spent all day today on the field trip, so I have a lot of um, anti-pastoral themes going on here tonight, some teacherly poems. This is called Little Green. This is a classroom. This is cleared ground. Little Green, please. I'm a teacher with one envelope of lettuce seeds. I have these terracotta pots, this bag of organic soil. You are suckle pear in Louis's three-year-old voice, or the real thing, smooth, cupped in my poem. I want you to know we plan on loving you, and I'm sorry for bringing you indoors like this. We will mist you with a plastic spray bottle, ask you how much light you need, move you around the room. The economy of time will turn in your favor. Just please show yourself. A sprout, a robust stalk, a lanky stretch toward the sun. I know I'm guilty of vision. Envision you on a plate, in a photo, on a small screen, where the first tiny leaf is the perfect imperfection against a wooden table or a white curtain window. If these frames were made of wood, we could compost them, return them to their intentions. You make me want to learn how. I want us to keep and unkeep you. Teach me your language. The forest fire and the trenches that we dig to keep humans safe. Sequoia semper virens that can outlast everything but our desire. The marbled merlet that nests in old growth trees. I will use as many names as I can to help you grow in our minds. Maybe specificity I think will help us understand you your green textured life, your green spirit life. But I have to be careful too because each word is a container and underneath each one is a rubber ball or an egg or a coin. And it is so hard to keep track of which one is where with all these children running around moving things. Like when Nicholas had his foot poised above a beetle and I said don't and he did. So we talk about it. We lift the shiny black shell that is beetle. Underneath, I see a receding parade of plants and animals. Behind that, the boys grin. I tell him he needs to look underneath the shell, but when he looks, he sees his own smile reflected back and seems delighted at how little sense it makes that he, the boy, is underneath the shell of a beetle. He tells me how the crunch spells his name. I tell him he is learning about why and what happens when. This is circumference, Nicholas. This is a circle getting bigger and smaller at the same time. This is a circle that never closes completely, or if it does, it just springs open again. Maybe it springs open at night and we're sleeping while dreams do all the work. Nicholas, what did you dream last night? Nicholas, how do you spell your name? Poke a hole in the dirt with your finger, Nicholas. Insects are citizens of this green space. I talk to him. He is nodding at me, but something in him flickers like a snake's tongue tasting peripheral air. His eyes light on a fly, which he calls a bee. This is a lesson, too. Our words are all wrong. But this is green. This is still you, green. I'm still talking about you, calling you up from the soil. We drop the pieces and play a new game. What is under this little green you? A scent, green tomato vines tied with string to memory, a tug at the brain, the leaf shape of a fallen word, all the directions you travel in search of light. There's this problem with specificity. I don't know what to say. I bought these seeds from this store I can't make even one of you. The sleeper. To the little girl napping on the bus ride home from our field trip, and for Tanya, who slept soundly. It's a different field trip. Sleep turns your body leaf for, 
Sleep turns your body leaf furl, greens the new wetted blades against cool gray rock face, all that is separate, unlearned. Eyelids gentle as sage leaves, slightly luminous, closed over the field of late noon, a slowing of the day motes in their native sun ray. You are a plant turning light to energy, the leaves of your body serrated, cutting into, yet, in, yet enclosed, contained in your growing. New antlers covered in velvet. Under sleep's canopy, thousands of paper whites open their eyes, dotted starwise on all the darkened domed walls and even the ceiling, whose roof or outerness is as unknowable as the point on your elbow that you will sometimes hurt but never see. Transfiguration. In the morning, I found our shadows still sleeping in the meadow. They had flattened out all the names we carried there. Burdens dropped weightless in night's field, like rattlesnake grass, which at this season is wheat colored and topped with clusters of dried seed bells that rattle in wind. Let's rename it pillow grass or hay dream. After we packed up and left, I'm sure the doe returned, nosing for soft green stems at twilight, same as the day before. One more. The owl and the pussycat compare dreams, or enduring hardship brings a spirited victory. <laughs> From the second story, I look out the window at the night and down below, into the yellow lit one California, bus belly, canoe cradle, its upstream swim. Commuters in slick brown bucket seats or new unfaded red ones rest their heads against windows. Every 10 minutes they're shuttled by brightest break night light. My friend was crying in a bathroom and a voice pulled her name out from nowhere, from night, the first star. We were a little drunk and talking about angels. What if buses were clothespin to wash lines and there was a woman at the end of each long street drawing them in? You pull me fast across the street as you talk. A lawn chair still wet from the night stands empty in the yard. Sun hasn't gotten around to it till now. Not knowing a name for something proves nothing, I read. You woke up angry, which is a, which I think is a good sign. We wait for the 29. I never want to say, why don't you steal from me anymore? But I must be afraid too, because I had apocalyptic dreams for once. I looked out the window to see half my world exploded. I bought some supplies from a store. How long could they last? My mother and I together at the register. We have faith in vision anyway quiet coop wake on a pond, letter V for veil, procession of water birds, a little provision, a small trail. We are tired. The city is all right. Buses pull us along from all over town to come hear our friends read poems in a bar, then drop us off one by one. A man in a park was looking for his son, saw a bicycle thrown under a tree, the small boy is in the branches, and there's the man, standing with his head in cedar, talking up to his son. Do you shave with your glasses on or off? There are some things I can't tell. I sit on the bench, watch, a sparrow's willow-woven trellis breast. Listen, red-winged blackbird's old cat meow, filtered through wood and water. I want to cup my hands to it all the glass in a hurricane lamp to make the night yellows brighter. I hate the feeling that you're not home yet. Text me. What a relief to be safe across the street. And hand in hand on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon. The moon. They danced.
Yes, by the light of the moon. Thank you.